We exploit machines, we find vulnerabilities, and we learn yeah, as we go on. Because tech is like, an evolving field. You, you can't learn one thing and say you've got it. So we learn. Well, I found that then that uh, introduced me to Joseph. That's how we really met. So Brett uh, is the co-founder of African Hakon, and I saw him on TV once. So I wanted to know more about what he does and everything because I was so inspired by him. So w once I met him, I was so happy and joyed because this had opened a new window to me. Yeah. I found Bright when I really didn't know he existed. I really didn't know the whole field existed. Just some, it's just a calling, you know? Something that was interesting me, but I didn't know what it was called. So I used to do a lot of tech stuff, you know, but the kind of protection on the side, the how people get in, stay out, you know, all that fascinated me. So I was doing that without knowing what it's called. So I one day presented a conference and I met Bright. Cybersecurity is a very enjoyable field where you get to break systems, see, you just see the, like the back end of the system, other than the, what the usual customer sees, which is the front end. According to me, cybersecurity is security of the cyber world. Most of us live in the actual world where security is physical more so, but we all put a lot of trust on the cyber world. We send our messages through the cyber world. We order things online through the cyber world. So security of the cyber world is what fascinates me. Back there, I really didn't think much. I really wanted to just play games. So I really got curious on how people would make these amazing things called games. So I really wanted to know how to make them, so I started developing. Then I got into software. I also got curious about how software is made. So I started developing software. Then I kind of saw something about cybersecurity, which then got driven by cybersecurity. Now I'm here. Um, I think okay, what I would say is, as I said, I really didn't know what it was. But there was just something, because I mean, it's security. What happened is, I used to think what what actually goes on because I mean, we all get we all get what we get when you when you buy a piece of software, you get that, and all you can use is the front end. So I used to wonder those people who make it, how do they make it? I mean, what do they do? Then around that time, I think there was a, a lot of problems with with security, with cyber security. I mean, a lot of hackers. So the whole society thought that hackers were evil people. And I, I think I was also part of that society that believed that hackers are bad people. So I was kind of hesitant, but then I think, I don't know, I think I read an article and I saw the light. Well, I was kind of like a cheeky child then. So my dad would leave his laptop, so I would go and then use his laptop to like play games. Then when he used to come, I used to just go away or hide somewhere. Uh, yeah, and that's how I got influenced with the gadgets. So I'd also say it was the same thing, yeah. except mine was legitimate. <laughs> so we had a PC at home, you know, an old one, Windows XP, I think, Windows 3. And we had that for a long time. And, you know, I was bored. There was nothing to do in the house. So I spent so much time on the PC, you know, learning the things that almost no one knew. All those hidden menus, all those hidden buttons. I think that helped me a lot. Well, I was actually, the only thing that was driving me then was curiosity. Because I wanted to know how was this there when and I've never seen it because I was part of those people who only knew Windows and and Macs. I only I never knew about Linux. So 
when I met Linux, it was kind of like something new to explore in, and I was very curious at that time. For me, I didn't even know Mac at that time. I just knew Windows. So when I met Linux, I was like, what is this? Because I'd seen that penguin sign everywhere. <laughs> Everyone has. You know, all kinds of app developers say it's, it's compatible with the three. <coughs> so what did you mean? So it was curious. It was a new frontier. I think I was extremely excited. And I was helped by my friend Bright, Dr. Bright. Well, it did beat my expectation. And hacking is my favorite hobby, really. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it kind of did, but it still has not. I mean, there's so much. What you know is behind you, what you don't know is ahead of you. So you go for what you do not know. I think there's so much for anyone to learn, and I still want to learn. Yeah, attack. So uh, I've made the x -Line program, which is a mobile uh, penetra penetration testing tool which allows you to find or uh, decompile, compile applications and really embed malicious code on them. So this is the command and control which is running an application uh, uh, waiting for to exploit this machine. So let's see control else that we did. So right now, I will be the victim. I'll open this executable file, thinking it's a very legitimate, legitimate application. And by opening that, he has action. He has access to my laptop. He can um, do webcam stream. He can do almost anything. I really wanted to make something. And what was on my idea at that time was a mobile, mobile application which is basically going to exploit this machine. So is this file which is there? Which get it not that file. And once you open this, no. He's taking a picture of this already. So this is um, the victim who has installed an application who has installed it. And uh, so now do you have the command and control? Sure. All right. So once you open this app, in one second, you already have access to the phone. So he can do anything. So you think it's a shopping app, which looks very normal, but he has access to my phone. So you can send us a message from this phone to this phone right here. Um, then, then, okay. Open what do you want to say? Hack that? Nations. By, by kids. By. <laughs> So, Slash R. Yeah. that is going to send an SMS coming to, yeah. So here it is, he sent messages. You can go to the WhatsApp database, um, you can find the call logs. Um, so here are the things that he can do. He can basically dump your call logs, dump your SMS, geolocate wherever you are, be able to activate the webcam, record the mic in the background, and um, it will do anything. Basically. So the malicious code is used to exploit an Android phone, or yeah, basically an Android phone. Once you install an application, be sure it's safe before you install it, because once you've installed it, it gives access to the attacker to your phone. Yay! Hey, we got Brad's phone. And the X line he created. Well, the first of all, program. if you download from Google Play Store, you have a better chance of being safe than downloading from browser websites, because browser websites are not scanned by anything, like unlike Google Play Store, where everything is scanned, then released to the public. So for browsers, you can embed your malicious code, send a link, they install it, and you have access to their mobile phone. That's it, yeah. The X-Line he created, the X-Line program, basically does the same thing. They'll be able to put a backdoor into an application and do all of these things. Way more than just that. Yeah, so that's basically how you exploit phones. <laughs> uh, let's. So uh, our neighbor have like really powerful Wi-Fi <laughs> connection. So I was asked like get the Wi-Fi password. So I kind of did because we kind of didn't pay for the, our internet subscription. 
I guess I'd say the same thing because you I was just there without Wi-Fi and everyone was clearly bored so you know help everyone. Why not my peers? Ah. Keep Learn. on <laughs> yes, that. Learn on library first. Do legal things second and look for a mentor. Well, if you're at school, be humble and make sure you do your school work and all that. Make sure you don't fail. And if you really want to learn uh, hacking, let, let, let Cyber and YouTube be your best friends, really. They really help a lot.